request to do winter 18 test three part two this is the portion of the exam it's the alkyne portion we have to know acetylene is f fine there is no ene in acetylene it is an alkyne we're starting there and this is going to be t C, C, T. That's a triple bond between the C still, so I'll start over. It doesn't look like a triple bond. I want to make sure it looks like a triple bond. T, C, C, T. And there we go. And down here, we're going to make K plus, C minus, triple C, H. That's called potassium acetylide, with acetylide being the conjugate base of acetylene. It's an acid-base reaction that also produces ammonia. What molecule became ammonia? Look at what's there. I like it, NH2 minus. She said that because in her mind, she crossed K plus off and started forgetting about it already. That's good. Potassium's not a relevant player. You don't have to talk about potassium. It was in that name, though that's why I drew it. So there you go. That's the only base that will give ammonia. And now I need to know how to get these H's off and replace them with T's. It's, it would like H minus to get the H off. And let's do that in orange or pink. One, H minus gets the H off. No, you're getting a little, you're getting your reactions a little crossed. You got, you've used acid base to take it off. Please use acid base to put it back on. You're putting on a hydrogen again, except you gotta use an acid that's got tritium as the acid instead of hydrogen. And the pKa must be less than 25. Do you know how I know that? We need this reaction to go forward. You've just created a base that's C triple C minus, right? You've created this base using H minus. You just need an acid with a pKa less than 25. What's wrong with this acid? We don't like wasting money. You could put TCl if you want. That's fine. How about T2O? What's the pKa of T2O? What's the pKa of H2O? It's the same question. 16. 16 will go towards 25, right? Here's your 25. But you've only got one of them on there so far. What do you do next? It's going to be boring. Same thing again. Step three, step four. No, we're not adding H's. We're doing acid base to get H's off and then put H's on with acid base as well. Oh, I changed the color. I'm sorry. You could have used TCL. Fine. No big deal. It's a little dangerous using strong bases with strong acids. It's, it's very dangerous. Okay. TCL is, is pKa negative five, correct? And C minus on this C triple C minus thing is a very strong base. PKB negative 11. All right. So you've made T, C, triple C, T, and oh, I can use the purple. This one's purple now. There you go. So if you had three Cs, you would do it three times, right? Yeah, but I, don't, I can't have three Cs. Yeah, that would be an octet violation. But I get what you're saying. Yes. Keep going until you got as many T's as you need. How's that? And then I'm going to hit it with BH3 and AC acetic acid. This is uh, hydroboration protonolysis. In addition, every time you have hydroboration. Okay, in addition, we got C triple, C is now C double C. In step 
Oh, sorry. In the BH3 step, I'm just getting my T's on there. They're still on the same side. Step one, BH3 adds and you get a B here and an H on the other side. But that's not the end. Protonolysis gets rid of the B and puts a proton in its place. The ACOH proton goes in its place. There you go. Thin addition. All right. Um, oh, oh, oh. This next part is chapter nine. Oh, <laughs> it's not even chapter eight. <laughs> so I'm just going to scribble it out. You don't know how to make an alkene back into an alkyne. You will, but not, not this test. So let's just scribble it out. Just chapter nine. Okay, good to know. Now, potassium acetylide needs to become 5-ethyl-1 heptine. Oh, 5-ethyl-1 heptine. So here's heptine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And 5-ethyl-1, two, three, four, five. It's there. Ethyl. Not methyl. Sorry. 5-ethyl-1 heptine. Do we agree that's 5-ethyl-1 heptine? I'm going to blow it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's five with an ethyl. What chemicals are going to take this thing? Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited because this is synthesis. That's a CC bond that wasn't there before. There's the nucleophile. What does it attack? Because that's what goes in this box. Something with a halogen, exactly. Everything in blue is copied. Every single carbon is copied and a halogen. We like Cl? Sure. Synthesis. Uh, you always use chlorine bromine, then you're in good, you're in good shape. Iodine's good too. Just never use fluorine. Don't use fluorine. It doesn't work. Iodine works great. Chlorine works great. Bromine works great. Okay, and then I have to. Oh, uh, let's do these two. They go together. They complementary. This is the mercury one, and this is the one where that memorized memorization thing does work, right? There's a normal alkyne terminal. You're gonna make a ketone, right? with the carbonyl here. All right, so we got a carbonyl on the carbon and a CH3 there. And we have the blue, it goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, with a ethyl second last. Yeah. Oxymercuration uh, has a backside attack on a triangle on the more substituted carbon. Okay. Don't attack the less substitute carbon because that one doesn't spend any time with a plus charge. Uh, you only look at the carbons in the triple bond. Everything else is irrelevant. Okay. Yeah, we don't do random reactions just because, oh, there's a more substituted carbon. Let's put the mercury on that or the oxygen on that one. No, 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 no. Some people do that, trust me. No, you only react the pi and the alkyne, right? So the other one is the same skeleton. Here's your skeleton. Except the carbonyl, because hydroboration puts a boron on the end and it gets replaced by an OH. That undergoes tautomerization to a tautomerization to a carbonyl. There, they, that's why they're complementary. They both put a carbonyl on there and two H's on the other side. 
You agree there's three H's here now? Do you agree there was one H there before? There's two new H's here. H2O, that's hydration. What about here? There was one H on the end and there's still one H from before. So that didn't change. There's two new H's here. They weren't there at all. Two H's and an O, that's hydration also with the opposite regioselectivity. You put the O on the less substituted versus more substituted. And all right. Is it time for more synthesis? Oh, that one, I have. That's, that's a sneaky little bugger. But this one is synthesis time, and I'll show you how I know. Uh, Non-3-ine, so that's three to four, and we're going to non. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, with a ethyl on seven, and two new carbons over here to make that three. I want to make sure you know that's two new carbons there. That molecule, one, cy oh, one cyclopentyl. Oh, there's one, two, three, cyclopentyl. It's also part of the red. There you go. One cyclopentyl, one, one has a cyclopentyl, one, two, three for the ion four, five, six, seven for the ethyl, and that's got everything. So the red part, look, you're here. You're here and you need to go here. When we did our synthesis before, what were the two pieces that reacted in the synthesis to make this? These two pieces. You need a C minus and a carbon with a halogen. The C minus is on the triple bond. So please tell me you know that you need to make a C minus first. You don't have a C minus yet. How did we do it before? We're going to do it again. She likes hydride. I like it. She's going to use hydride every time she needs to take the H off of terminal alkyne. I like it. <laughs> now you've got the, the nucleophile. The electrophile is the piece that gets attacked. It better have a halogen on this carbon right here, right there, you need a halogen to make that new bond. So step two, you got your cyclopentyl, you got your CH2, you got your CH2, you got a Cl. There's synthesis again. And then we're gonna do some cool stuff. We're gonna do, uh, Hydroboration uh, protonolysis again. And this time I want two products because the substitution is the same on both sides. You can't have any regioselectivity. So one of the reactions puts the B here that gets replaced by a D and puts a T here. The other reaction puts the T over here and the B over here and the B gets replaced by D again. That's your two products. Sin addition, that's your two products. You want a little time saver? Little time saver says, call this R group one, call this R group two, because it looks like I'm gonna be using them again. And the R groups, R1 and R2, are now gonna be attached to us in a thin fashion there. And you got a new B, uh, sorry, T on one side. Uh, I don't like you. Sorry. Not you guys. It's going to keep doing it. I thought I could get away with a copy paste. I am sadly mistaken. Both products are going to be thin addition of B and T to create this. One of them puts the T here and the B on the other side, which gets replaced by a D during protonolysis. And the other one puts the T on the left and the D on the right. 50-50. You like it? You don't like it. 
Because Na and NH3, same story again. But it's trans. Because there's radicals and an anti-addition. You guys have to know this makes trans alkenes and this makes cis. Because you're not, if you don't know that, you're going to lose points in part two and then again in the retrosynthetic analysis, where you have to do a target molecule that's either a cis or a trans alkene. So you better know the BH3 acetic acid reaction to make the cis, or her favorite is the H2 and Lindlar's catalyst, which also makes the cis. And the sodium ammonia is the only way to make the trans. So we got this, we got R1 and R2. Now on opposite sides, the new H's, which you don't have to show me because you drew the R's on opposite sides. It's assumed the H's are on opposite sides as well. And there you go. Now this one, if you look at it carefully, what are the new things on this molecule that weren't there before? What went on the end that wasn't there before? That's not a carbonyl. H. H, thank you. There was one H before, two H's now. Better have an H in this thing. And the H is on one side and some kind of oxygen on the other. Yeah, O isopropyl. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. This is the same as the hydration reaction, except you're not using water, you're using an alcohol. Almost every reaction we ever learn in this class, water can re be replaced with an alcohol and the mechanism's identical. In this one, we're using alcohol and sulfuric acid. It's not quite the same reaction because if this was water and sulfuric acid, you'd end up with an enol. And they love undergoing tautomerization. Why can I not do tautomerization here? It's not an enol. It doesn't have an H on the all. That's a required piece for tautomerization to take that H off. That is not an H. You can't take a C off. So this is like addition of an alcohol to an alkyne. That's exactly what happened. You added a new H here and a new O over here on the more substituted carb. Right? This was an alcohol. It's an ether now. Yeah. Consider this a bonus question. There you go. Because yeah, it's not technically covered, but it's covered by the sentence. Everything that water does, an alcohol can do, except this reaction stops at this stage because tautomerization is not possible. You want to throw mercury sulfate in there just to be happy? Go ahead. It's optional, but do it. Because you remember when you added water, you used mercury sulfate. And I'm trying to make it clear that whatever you do with water, you can generally do the same thing with an alcohol. So I made all the chemicals the same, except I changed the water to an alcohol. And here we go, probably doing something, oh, two products from here. This is a blast from the past. That's an alkene with HCl. Oh, come on. Don't, I don't want to see the carbocation, but yes, there is a carbocation in the mechanism. And does it matter where the cation is when the substitution is the same? These are carbon groups. No. So half the time cation here, half the time cation here, Cl minus goes on the cation. And yeah, two products. Oops. Two products. R1, R2, R1, R1. R2, R2. If you want to keep track of your HCl, one of the products puts the H there and the Cl here. The other one puts the Cl on the left and the H on the right. In the pi bonds bond. That was our first mechanism we ever learned. 
So I, I threw a chapter six reaction in there, just seeing if, seeing if you're paying attention. It's fair game on a test with six, six and seven on it, right? We get all the boxes? We did. That was a good one. And we got to save it, stop it, all that good stuff.